Hey everyone, my name is Wedge and welcome back to the Manasaurus Tournament Report. Between Theros spoilers and the imminent standard rotation, our tournament review series has been on break for a few weeks. But now we're back and better than ever with a whole new standard and new decks to report on. So let's get right to it. This weekend, we had a Star City Games Open in Worcester, Massachusetts. This is the first major standard event to feature Theros since its release last Friday. These are the top 8 from that event, and I gotta say, this is going to be a fun standard environment. First place went to a mono red aggro deck run by Philip Bertarelli. Interestingly for the archetype, Bertarelli's build was very light on 1 drops. Instead, his curve is weighted towards the 2 slot and packs a couple hard hitting 3 drops as well. On that second turn, he can drop an Ash Zealot, Fire Fist Striker, Burning Tree Emissary, or his one of Gorehouse Chainwalker. Sometimes you can turn that Emissary mana into a Lightning Strike or a Magma Jet, four fifths of the 10 card burn package. He rounds out the last slot there with two shocks. Nothing new at three mana. He sticks with Boros Reckoner and Chandra's Phoenix here. However, his curve tops out at four with a set of Fanatic of Mogus. The Fanatic was an MVP in the deck. It consistently domed the opponent for three or four damage. In eighth place, we saw a more traditional mono red build. This deck includes a set of Fire Drinker Seder among its 12 one drops alongside the Cackler and Foundry Street Denizen. Chandra's Phoenix was its only three drop. The two drops were fairly typical. The Emissary, the Chainwalker, Fire Fist Striker, and two Goblin Shortcutter. The burn package was 8 cards split evenly between Lightning Strike and Shock. Fairly simple, but evidently effective. We saw 4 control decks in the top 8. In 2nd place was Blue White Control under the command of Max Teats. 4th, 5th, and 6th went to Esper Control deck variations. The Blue White deck had 2 win conditions. One of them we've seen before, Aetherling. We know why it's here. It's big, it's evasive, and it's very hard to kill. The other is new. Elspeth's Sun's Champion. It was widely speculated that the new Elspeth might become a win con in control decks, and they weren't wrong. Elspeth was actually the only new Theros card in the main deck. The rest looked more or less like what we've come to expect from Blue White. The sideboard did, interestingly, include two Yoked Ox. It is, after all, a one drop that effectively neutralizes one of an aggro deck's creatures until a sweep happens. The three Esper lists looked very similar on the spell side of things. Hero's Downfall and Doomblade joined Detention Sphere and Azorius Charm and Spot Removal. Far and Away also showed up in all three lists in various amounts. The rest of the spells looked very blue-white. Sphinx's Revelation, Supreme Verdict, Jace Architect of Thought, and so on. Each deck, however, ran a different win condition. In one list, we had two Aetherlings in the main deck, and that's it though Blood Baron of Viscopa and Ashiok did show up in the sideboard. Another list ran only one Aetherling, but also had two each of the Blood Baron and Obsidak Ghost Council. And the third ran three Ashiok and two Elspeth in the main deck to finish the game with mill or creatures. The other two decks in the top eight were both mid-range variations involving green and red. One of them took third place with just green and red. The other was Naya and came in seventh. And surprisingly, there wasn't a single Xenoghost between them. The green-red variation went quite heavy with its creature base, adding a lot of creatures with expensive but powerful monstrous abilities. Ember Swallower, Stormbreath Dragon, and Pelucranos World Eater joined the list, along with Sylvan Carry added to ramp up to them. The rest of the list is split between additional ramp with Elvish Mystics and Utility with Gorklan Rampager and Scavenging Ooze. Lightning Strike joins a burn package that once consisted solely of Mizium Mortars. And lastly, Dami Raid is joined by Chandra Pyromaster, making for a rare sight, a green-red deck with a solid card advantage engine. The Naya variation looks very similar, though it swaps Loxanon Smiter and Boros Reckoner into the creature base. With the amount of control on the field and the proven power of the Reckoner, those decisions are pretty easy to understand. The deck runs almost no dedicated burn, just a pair of Mizium Mortars, though its Selesnya Charms also keep bigger threats in check. Like the green-red deck, this deck adds Chandra Pyromaster to the list of Planeswalkers for the sake of card advantage. 
Also, interestingly, the deck ran four of each on color Theros Temple, abandoned in Triumph. Even the Esper control decks only ran three of each of their temples, Deceit and Silence, and poor Temple of Mystery was left out in the cold, with no ban, rug, or bug decks to give it a home. That wraps up the top eight of the Star City Open in Worcester. How does the new standard compare to your expectations? Any big cards from the weekend that you knew had potential? Any cards you were surprised not to see? Well, this was only the first week of Theros and Standard, so let's see who's singing a different tune next week. There is no Standard Grand Prix next weekend, but the Star City Games Open is going to Cleveland, Ohio. We'll be back this time next week with coverage of that event. As always, subscribe below for the most up-to-date and reliable Magic the Gathering information you could ever need. This is the Mana Source. I'm Wedge. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.